Compton essays ain't nothing to fuck with, but they all fuck with me. And bitch, I love it. Welcome to another episode of One Upsmanship. I'm Michael Swaim. And I'm Adam Ganser. <laughs> and I'm just. Adam's very uh, resigned. Just today. appreciating that. <laughs> Cheating those whoop facts. Whoop de whoop, whoop de whoop, whoop. Let's get right into it. <laughs> we're not nerds. We're, we're cool guys. <laughs> We uh. have emerged, like many of you probably, from a fugue of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have to take some deep breaths and put that out of our head because um, it's not the topic today. No, the nice thing is Incineroar fights for us now, though. <laughs> That's true. Like he fights for us. For maybe the last 15 minutes, we've been <laughs> debating the strategic pluses and minuses of, well, once he was our enemy, yeah. and now he's on our side. How did you feel about Sonic? Uh, how he was rendered in this game. I just feel like you don't... I thought you were generally asking how I feel about Sonic, and no. I was going to flip the table. <laughs> this podcast is over. I'm in love with him. Don't you know? Yeah. How did you feel about how he's rendered? I feel like we should save it for a Smash Brothers <laughs> episode, man. <laughs> do you mean... I'll answer, though. Do you mean visually? No, I mean as a game... Don't know, because I, I oh, you didn't play him, play him yet. Yet. I play him yet. Okay, yeah, yeah, great. yeah. Great. You you played him. Controller hog. It was a controller hog. But I, I did use him to acquire Incineroar, who now fights <laughs> <Yeah>, for us. <laughs> now, Incineroar. Oh, you have an Incineroar? Now we have an Incineroar. <laughs> Guess what, Hans? He likes fighting I've for us. I've got an Incineroar. <laughs> <laughs> Just in the vents with your Incineroar. Uh, well, today we're covering a very different game. Not really that different, actually. Wait, we settled on... We're going to be covering Super Mario World today. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I was going to say, that's not that different. No, it's there not. There was another one we were debating covering that is very different. But no, we settled on Super, Super Mario, Mario World, World. Um, which I do plan on releasing these in roughly the order we recorded them. Oh, interesting. So by now you will have heard our SNES versus Genesis episode. Yes, I hope so. In which Super Mario World featured heavily as a wedge issue threatening to divide this very podcast. <laughs> In Twain. I mean, really what it was used as is a sort of qualitative measuring stick. Yes. Through which a lot of other games of that generation were measured. That's true. Yeah. But now I get to set my Sega fandom aside and just admit that it's one of the best games ever made, which is going to be nice. Yeah. Um, So let's get right into it. I think you should probably take the first rant. The speed run? No, I'll take the speed run. Oh, you're going to take it. Okay. Because I need some time to think of a rant. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Full disclosure. Heavily prep. Peek behind the curtain. Yeah. He didn't I, prep when we were playing. We were inquiring Incineroar <laughs> instead of prepping. <laughs> My mind was focused on a laser. Yeah, yeah. Focused on a laser? <laughs> like a laser. Unlike now. You were using that laser a lot. Pass that chickity chickity chicken checkpoint. And it's been a game called Super Mario World that came out what year, Adam? 1990. 1990. Well, later than I thought. I would have thought 89. I don't know why that's a big difference. But um, features Jumpman repurposed in a way that I think really undermines the entire Jumpman story world and legacy. (laughs) Um, But I guess we're all fine with this. So Jumpman becomes Mario. Mario is, uh, I don't even believe... Yeah, yeah, that's the movie polluting my mind. We don't see him in the normal world, and then he goes to Mario Land. He just exists in the Mushroom Kingdom. He looks like a human. Uh, We assume he's a plumber because of things like instruction manuals and his overalls, but and that there are pipes. Right. Um, But I'm going to say, I think this is a fresh take on Super Mario World. I'm just going to say what we know for sure. Right. A small man (laughs) in overalls. Uh Uh-huh locates a princess in a pink dress repeatedly. Yeah. He uses many items to do this. Uh He stomps on turtles and animate things that only have eyes and mouths and feet, no other appendages, called Goombas, which is a slur for Italians, which Mario appears to be. I don't know what that means, but maybe there's something there. (laughs) Is this a speed run or like a strange editorial? Um, Switch... Palaces, ghost houses, Bowser castles, airship, you're done. Everyone, there's no point in doing a speed There is run. no airship in this. That's in Mario 3. 
There's no point in doing a speedrun for Super Mario World is my point. So let's move on to your rant. Mm. I think everyone knows where we're at. Mm. It's like we wouldn't have to speedrun Tetris, really, mm. would we? No. Same deal. I think it's reached that level of legacy. Yeah. yeah. So. Checkpoint, checkpoint. Yeah. So for my rant, I'll say that I do think Super Mario World is the best thing Mario's ever made. Like I think it's the best Mario game overall. It is not my favorite. My favorite is Mario 64. Uh, but I think it's the best game because <laughs> Luigi Lost in Time doesn't do it for <laughs> you. Even Luigi's Haunted Mansion <laughs> didn't quite scare up a, a victory Ooh. for me. No, I uh, I think this is the best game, and it's part because it's just very refined and polished. Like if you if you compare it to Mario Three, which was not that much earlier, uh, it's a lot more focused. It's a lot more uh, robust. It's not quite as imaginative. As Mario 3 in some ways, it's actually a little less imaginative, uh, but everything they do, they do much better than any Mario game before and maybe since. Um, I think that this is the best side-scrolling platforming game ever made, probably. Um, I can't think of one that's better. Um, I, th- I can't separate the experience of having been a kid when this came out and playing it for the first time and beating it in a week and thinking it was the best thing I'd ever seen. Um, So I don't know how good it is to a 10-year-old now, but I know that having played it recently, it is the first Mario game that is still fun to play for controls. Like, it's tight. The controls are really good. Whereas a lot of the earlier Mario games are still a little floaty comparatively. Um, This is the one that introduced Yoshi, and I think Yoshi is now an inseparable character from the Mario-verse. And I think it was a good introduction because it was a fun new way to play Not the the Mario world. It's the Mario verse. I, think I mean, should... I think now. <laughs> All right. Right? Since this game's know. called Mario World, I don't know. Uh, this is also a game that made me go like, what does Mario ever have a consistent world at all? Because I would say this is the game that suggests that they don't. They don't have a consistent world at all. Like, it's not in the Mushroom Kingdom. It's in Dinosaur Land or whatever. The Mushroom Kingdom is not even... Technically, you still see tons of toads, and yeah. a lot of the landscape is, is, is mushrooms. Right. Um, but... Actually, Japanese culture and art has always loved the mushroom more than we have. So, like, mushrooms sure. are not a weird thing in a Japanese game. No, but <laughs> this game, I don't think nominally even takes place in the Mushroom Kingdom. No, no, no. They say it's dinosaur land because yeah. Yoshi lives there and he's right. not home. You hit the coconut and thing. And you're trying to rescue oh, his babies. Wait, I think I just realized something yeah. new about Super Mario World now, which is probably fairly this. rare to happen. Uh, the blue blocks that make... Uh, you know, uh, information come up. Yeah, the info is the, box. Is the, inf- is the logo on it, is that a PA speaker? Yes, it's a speaker. I always thought it was a pie and who cares, it's Mario. You know what I mean? Oh, so like I didn't need, my brain didn't need to know why it made sense. <laughs> I, I have, uh, I want to talk about what the world in Sub- Super Mario World suggests about the larger Mario narrative. Because I sure, think but it's, some, it does suggest some but things, it's, it's but we're not going to do that right now. Time. Yeah, I know. We're not going to do that now. Um, I think this game is also the end of the 2D platform era in some ways because they made they they still make them and they've made them since but there ha- really hasn't been another contender that can Who's beat they, it. Nintendo or all of gaming them. All of gaming. Okay. I mean, I think Rayman is an, is a strong contender um but they even Nintendo stopped making good side scrolling platformers after this. 2D. Yeah. Yeah. And they went straight into 3D like this was sort of the penultimate of it or the the, the culmination of it. Um, I don't know what else to say other than the cape is less good to me than the raccoon tail, and I know that people are going to disagree with that, and uh, I like the music in this the best of any Mario, I think, and that is it. My turn. Uh, I'm going to do the whole thing like a Mario. No, no, don't oh, worry, don't God. worry, don't <laughs> worry. We're done. I'm going to do it like Wario. <laughs> um, now I'll, we have a choice. I'll agree yeah. with you. The cape is... Uh, to this day, and I think it's intentionally so, it's a little wonky to control, but that's yeah. part of the challenge of collecting the whole column of right. coins is, right. yeah, the cape's a little tough. You got to yeah. really get a good run. Um, and the the raccoon tail makes more sense, like tap to fly is kind of... Well, they abandoned that kind of flying style yeah. in Mario 64 for something much closer to the raccoon tail. Right. You know? So my rant is that Super Mario World... Uh, I agree. This is one of those episodes where it's more of an analysis than a review because um, our format goes both ways, baby. 
and I think it's clear that we're both going to like keep the game. Yeah. So I'm just going to dispense with that layer of, if you want to hear us fight, go to the SNES versus go to Sonic CD. Genesis. You'll get it. Uh, You'll get what you came for. You animals. (laughs) But I, uh, I think it's, as I said last night off mic, it's like the diehard of Mario's like diehard. (laughs) That's what I'm getting at in that. All the diehards behind the scenes were just generic action movie screenplays that then got massaged to be a diehard because Die Hard was a franchise that was considered a good bucket. Right. Like John McClane could do lots of different things. Right. Um, You just have to tweak it here and there. Let Bruce Willis be a dick on set and say what he does and it'll have consistency. And sometimes it works and sometimes it really doesn't. But Super Mario World is the diehard where it's like. This was always meant to be a Die Hard slash Mario. Yeah. Uh, it's clearly conceived with the same kind of discipline that Nintendo now applies because they have the luxury to all their AAA games like Breath of the Wild or Mario Odyssey. I feel like this is the first time they weren't scrambling in the infancy of the industry to make Mario rise above the others. Like, no. Mario 1 and 2, Mario is still like, I don't know who's going to win, Mario or Sonic. Well, and 2 is a straight-up port of a different franchise. And that's franchise. what gives me yeah. the diehard comparison is, yeah, Mario 2 literally is that, which is why you're yanking turnips out, out of the ground and uh, the princess floats. And right, you're like, and you're in a dream world. That and... won't be relevant again until Smash Brothers, where right. she floats as an homage to this. Yeah. Um, but I do think this is the first one where you can really feel the trademark Actually, Super Metroid, you kind of feel it, but it's intentionally retro. But uh, Super Mario World feels like they've fully developed the trademark Nintendo formula that I think underpins all that they do nowadays. Yeah. And furthermore, it's the first game ever graphically where things were detailed enough to look like a cartoon. And I don't I think we could easily underestimate how important that was. It didn't look like a stack of pixels at all anymore. It looks like it was detailed enough to look like a doodle with colors filling it in. And that reminds a kid brain of like and at that age it was a real thing, Saturday morning cartoons. So like Yeah, that's true. It felt like an immersive world visually Mm -hmm. in a way that no game leading up to it had every game i played up to that point it it was like super mario world felt like seeing a pixar movie for the first time yeah it did even more than 64 which makes more sense because it's 3d rendered but i mean like the big bold bright colors the fact that mario was like larger like he was rendered larger just a little bit yeah he looked like a full body (laughs) like he had, he also, he had, there was just like slight changes to uh, like his movement, like his hat would blow back a little bit and like. He became more discernible as, off, honestly, as like a corporately designed icon. Like he started right. to look more like Mickey Mouse right. and less like pixels assembled functionally with no real purpose. I think you're right to say, I mean, I don't. And I think that was just, important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll thing. leave it there. Let's yeah. go uh, okay. past. Well, the checkpoints in this are just finishing levels, right? You're just you're just going through that weird ticker tape thing that is always scrolling up and down. I think we should go to Vanilla Zone, I believe one two, oh. and collect ninety nine lives. You know that trick? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I might yeah. be it might be Donut Land somewhere, but let's I think we'll go right. get the P. Yeah. We'll double back. We'll get all the coins and get. We got ninety nine <laughs> lives, so game on's gonna be very safe. <laughs> I've removed all tension from this episode. You sure have. Uh, I think I want to say that I agree with you. That this is not a game as much about s- telling what Mario is or can game be. Game on. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like this game isn't really trying to establish the rules of Mario or anything or compete against other platformers because it isn't really at this point. Like Sonic doesn't exist yet when this game comes out. And they're so different. It was still right. 2D platforming was still the Wild West. Like right. you could invent a new thing. But this game is clearly about we're going to polish and perfect what we've done up to this point. It was, it was. I would say platforming at the time Mario World came along was already a dominant genre, but it was right. like in the midst of its 20s. It right. wasn't, yeah, it wasn't. Now it's weird. We think about it as it's almost an extinct genre. Like it It's had a, a throwback genre. It now. had a short lifespan, but right. this was the period, you're right, where they are, could you could still invent like 
no, no, no. 2D platforming would be more fun and efficient this way. Right. It wasn't all figured out already. <laughs> right. It's like the Western now. Like, yeah. In movies. Like mm-hmm. Western. You see them once in a while. But right. they are, oh, we're doing a Western. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. You know, it's like, that's what it is. Uh, okay, so I, I just want to like go back and remember the things that were unique to this game for the time and see if you think they matter now still. So one of them is big enemies. Like, this, one of the things that this changed was there were giant enemies and objects and stuff that could be rendered in better time and space so like there was a giant bullet that flies that's the one i think every i don't remember many others there was there's a lot of things like the giant boo and the in oh the, yeah there's a big boo that's true and just like just a bunch of things like but, that but uh i remember very clearly that the giant bullet right. it's so funny because kids you damn kids listening will be like yeah that that's nothing, man. Cause, uh, of course not. The way I felt when I saw my first Colossus in Shadow of the Colossus, I was that impressed when I just saw a large bullet bill right. for the first time. I was like, oh, I didn't know it could render a thing that like, large. Like, holy shit. Oh, yeah. shit. And then when that was the point of and it. And then you're like, should I jump on it? It's so big. I'm sure I'll just die. And you're like, no, I can kill them. By the same tactic. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's really rewarding. Yes. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm <laughs> stomping on fools left and right. The I bigger they yeah. come, baby. <laughs> but they, like that happens in the first level. Right. Like that giant bullet. Because oh, it's Super a statement. Mario World pulls out all the stops. And I think yeah. you're right. It's, it's a quantum leap forward in polish. Like if you listen to... The number of layers the score has versus the yes, number of layers definitely. Mario 3 That's has. It's a huge change. It's the equivalent of their, like, you know what? This is our prestige thing. Let's bring the London Philharmonic in. We're not fucking around. It's, the score was very advanced for the time. It's also, uh, I would argue, a little less. Like, the, the score for Mario World is, is never trepidatious in any way or, mis- like, or mysterious or rote in the way that, like, Mario 3 had some scores that were kind of dark mm. uh, or even like a little bit melancholy. And Mario 1 certainly did. They really don't nail the melancholy till six, Mario 64. No. And yeah. I think that might not even be intentional. I'm not sure. It works, but it's, I don't I know. I think it's intentional in Breath of the Wild. So whether 100%. it was intentional in 64, they, they, because you know how it works. Like people who worked on Breath of the Wild probably grew up playing Mario 64. Right. And I'm sure some of them are like, there was something really melancholy and like vacant about Mario. We gotta 64. have that again. I want that in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were right about that. Uh, so big items. The second is the Z axis, right? Like a like a moving Z axis. All, right. All right, Euclid. All right, Copernicus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pythagoras. Why don't you stop calculating the curvature of the Earth and come back down to the rest of us? Ge- uh, there <laughs> Euclid is, and ease. <laughs> uh, I don't recall the use of the third dimension in Mario World. It, so parallax is what I mean by that. Oh, so, okay. So, but that was like a big selling point was yeah. that but explain oh, the, background, the, the background of these games moves at a different speed than the foreground does, which sounds like so... <laughs> It means that you feel like you're in a realer world than you did in Mario 3 or 1 or 2, right? It's it's yeah. like a huge leap technologically forward that they have multiple layers of distance. Have you ever seen distance. Uh, the amazing way like Fleischer tunes used to accommodate that or no. like accomplish that in black and white cartoons? So like there's old Popeye cartoons uh, and a bunch of cartoons, Sinbad and the Sales of Seven Seas was one. But there's this amazing technique I do suggest you look up on YouTube where... They would accomplish parallax right. in old, old cartoons by building a real set that's a circle oh. on a Lazy Susan and have animation cells that's propped so up cool. around the edge and switch them out as the set rotated. So like Popeye's walking and the background is a claymation set that has real parallax. That's so good. It looks so good. I love that. And then, you um, know, he uses racial epithets against Japanese people. And I don't whatever. love that as much. And that's why you don't see the cartoon, but right. that technique is cool. <laughs> Uh, they ever decide why he has like forearm cancer? Because <laughs> his forearms are insane. Oh, that's if you join the Navy, that's the, their promise. You'll come out looking like Cloud Strife. <laughs> so uh, neat. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure that Mario didn't. I'm sure that Super Mario World didn't invent the parallax thing in video games. Like I'm sure that didn't happen. I wouldn't be shocked if a historian told me that Nintendo programmers were the first to. De- Someone had to develop the code that made it possible. Right. And Nintendo was, you know, I don't know. There's probably some PC game somewhere, or some like 8-bit game that tried it, or something. You know what I mean? Like PCs it, it, usually lead the way on yeah. like things that require 
oh, the computer, the brain has to be even faster. A PC is going to get there before right. a console, yes. Nonetheless, I feel like that was one of the things that in the commercials and stuff, when you'd saw it, you're like, oh, wow. So like Even the if you si- didn't know it. Yes. Yeah. The size of the enemies, the colorfulness of it that you mentioned, the use of parallax. Um, and then like just as gameplay stuff, uh, it didn't have as much stuff to do in it as Mario World or Mario 3. Like like there were less um, power ups. There's there were less variety shroom, of experiences. Shroom, flower, cape, feather. Cape and feather are one of the They're same. one thing. And Yoshi. That's it. And spin Be- jump. You have the spin jump, which you didn't have That's before. That's true. Uh, yeah, which can break bricks beneath you, which is usually only used to get Yoshi coins, which is another new thing. Sure. Um, that's, a, that's a very mild But you're thing. right. Three had like the trident and the boot with the it had wind so up key many in it things. And the, Hammer Brothers. You could be a hammer yeah. brother. There were two different kinds of raccoon tails. Odyssey is sort of a return to three in that, in way, that way, philosophically. Yes. Um, yeah, I do think you're right that there's the Mario is their Mickey Mouse very clearly in the right. sense that Mario Kart is Mario Kart is Mario Kart. Smash Brothers is Smash Brothers is Smash Brothers. Mario's always going to be running around, but he might do a variety of things, you know. When do you he think he might throw a sunshine at you, etc., right. etc., et and I think when Odyssey came out, it was like a wow, this is a real departure, but now when I think about 3, it's kind of not no, that's why Odyssey was great. It's spiritually it felt related, perfectly to three. in tone with Mario. So I want to ask a question: When do you think Mickey became the way we think of Mickey now? Like, when do you remember Mickey being first realized that way, and not as the two D whimsical character? I'm going to answer that, but I also want to make a note that I still want to go back and talk about Yoshi. Yeah, sorry. Um, no, as we a need power to. up yeah, in yeah. the context of being a power up, not as a character. Right. <laughs> but uh, what do you mean? I mean. So do like, you mean when he was redesigned? Because Steamboat like, Willie obviously doesn't look like the modern right, Mickey. Right, but also the tone of what Mickey is. Or do you mean this hip-hop Mickey with the saggy jeans no, 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 sewn no, no. into the back of my jeans? That's Mickey trying to be Sonic, <laughs> and I'm not into that. Because uh, there's only one Sonic, and one might argue there shouldn't be any Sonics at all. Uh, <laughs> I would. So I'm just going to, instead of setting Wait, up, what? I'm going to say this. <laughs> What the what what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's go back a second. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, quick, See, usually I like out. to be fast, but this time I feel like I missed something. Yeah. No. So I feel like Mar- like Mickey became Mickey in Fantasia. Like that's like the earliest version I can remember where Mickey was a little bit of a dope, you know. And oh, like, you mean his character? Yeah, traits? his character and the way he looks. The look, I think. That's true, and it's very Mario appropriate because Fantasia was one of the first times where they're like, Mickey uh, is going to reenact this. I mean, it is an old legend of the right. Sorcerer's Apprentice, right. but Mickey stars in it, and right. that's, of course, now you're off to the races. Well, Mickey's our guy who can be anything and anything. It's almost like his world is a play, like Mario. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. but that's why I was bringing it up, is that I feel like in He's some ways- He's become an icon that transcends reality and just represents our brand. Right. Yeah. That's what like that moment, that Fantasia moment for Mickey mm-hmm. is what Super Mario World is for Mario to me. And what do you think gets it there? Is it because is it accumulation of everything we've said? Or is it because he's in Dino Land? <laughs> like what is It's not Dino Land. What opens him up to now we can put him in anything? I think it's that we I think it's that uh that every every choice they made was done well enough that you were never bummed about any of the places you had to go. So like Mario 3, there was a lot of amazing things in it, but there were levels that were really difficult and frustrating and you didn't enjoy doing. It did. It had that old school gaming feel yeah. that arcades had where it's like punishing, no save yes. points, get good at it, nerd. Go back and play <laughs> the last level and don't cheat. Yeah. The last level to get to Bowser. Yeah. It's a fucking slog. It's really hard and frustrating. Super Mario. Well, man, we didn't even mention Super Mario World. Blew my mind by introducing save points. That changed my whole fucking life. Did three have? Uh, three, you could save by each world, I want to say. Like you saved. Yeah, but I mean, this was pause any time. Every level. Right. It did Notch have in that. your belt, save. Because yeah, I think that represents a clear change industry wide. Uh, it's realizing that the world of arcades where you punish the player because you're trying to get uh, tokens per minute right? to, no, we want to basically, we just want them orgasming all the time because they're just going to buy our game and then yep. own it. Yep. So we just want the game to be fun. 
the player is ha- is always having a blast. It should always be fun. And, and then, of course, if there's old school players who are like, but I like hard games, there's a niche for that. You got Darksiders or whatever. To, to, I'm sorry, what's it called? Dark no, you're Souls. Right. Dark Souls. To further illustrate that, early in this game, in, in Super Mario World, they give you a stage in the middle of the second world that's just a place you can get free power-ups the rest of the game. Right, you can like, always come back, and but and you can and just it's not always a power up. No, it's, it's not self-evident a secret. when yep. you find it. Yeah. That's all it is. It's a secret, and it saves every time you make any change to the map at all. Yeah, which is great. And compare that to Mario Three. You had to know where all the tricks were, and some of them were like, "Oh, you have to hold down for five seconds, and you can fall behind the backdrop, and that's because something. there's just a broken pixel." Well, but yeah. it was designed on purpose to do on purpose. That. But I mean, it's like. It doesn't make intuitive like sense in the way that you would solve a puzzle. Right. You would have to stumble upon it or your right. friend at school tells knew, you. Knew about it. My right. friend stumbled on this and I heard right. and here, do this. Right. Yeah. That is a different, that's the game designer saying, listen, we're not trying to make this hard for you. Or did you ever call the 1-900 Nintendo No, I bought, the, I bought the books. Oh, see. I bought Nintendo Powers and stuff. My parents were, wouldn't let me buy strategy guides. Because they thought it would shorten the games and we were poor and they didn't want to have to mm-hmm. buy a new game sooner. Mm-hmm. But they didn't understand. They weren't tech savvy enough right. to know that I could call a 900 number that would literally do like movie phone. I think a lot of people alive probably don't know Oh, this. I do remember this. I'd call a 900 number yeah. and it would go. And so it would rack up because you'd have to be on it for 30 minutes to yep. get where you wanted. The one that is burned in my brain is type in the first three letters of the game. You typed in. Willie Beamish. And I was like, yes. And they were like, are you at school in detention? Press one. If not, <laughs> press two. And it went through That's this so point good. and click adventure yeah, yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Took like 20 minutes to get to like, I wanted to know how to solve the last puzzle in the game, you know? Ooh. Ooh. Punishing. Ooh. Punishing. punishing. All right. Anyway, the point being Mario World, and I just realized this as you were telling me, Mario World is the first time that the video game designers were like, we don't need this to be hard. We'd rather it be fun. Yes. And that's and a I huge change. It represents a huge conceptual yeah. shift between arcade thinking and console thinking. Right, right. And we'll never go back, probably. We're I, well, again, I played both of those games back to back because I thought we might end up doing an episode mm-hmm. about them both or whatever. Um, and I thought Mario World was just way more fun. Like, I finished Band everything. Three? Yeah. I finished everything in Mario World easily. And Mario 3, I, like, dicked around in all the worlds and stuff, and I was like, yeah. Uh, 64 was the first game I ever felt compelled to 100%. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> really good. Speaking uh, of Yoshi, bringing it back to Yoshi. He was barely in 64, but unfortunately. But 100%ing is how you get and him. And you meet him. But yeah. I want to talk about Yoshi vis a vis Super about Mario him. World because uh, I think even though there's... It's kind of like Gordon Ramsay says when he comes into these restaurants, these Cheesecake Factory-esque establishments, and goes, uh, you, can't, you can't handle this. Cut your overhead. Cut this ingredient, this ingredient, pick your five best things, pick one that's going to become, that's kind of unique, that could become a signature dish that people could only associate with your place, have five things on your menu. Like he's very much from the in and out model of menu design versus the Cheesecake Factory. And I do think there's a lot to be said about, um, like skim milk was invented as a, as a billion dollar product by removing fat from milk, like by taking something away. Uh, less is more in a powerful way sometimes. And I think Super Mario World re Mario 3, it's so brilliant that they were like, we don't need a lot of these extraneous ones, but you know what we do need? Something that actually fundamentally changes your method of locomotion. Because that's something Nintendo understands so well and to this day that I think a lot of gamer designers don't understand. Especially when you think of like middle shelf games that are on the coattails of other more notable games that fill the shelves and you play them and they did their best to get the idea of clicking and you swing a sword and the guy has a death animation. But they don't understand what was fun about shooting someone's leg in GoldenEye and their leg flies back. Right. You know, like, they don't understand the quintessential idea that the game interaction needs to be fun and or change what you're doing in some way. And Yoshi literally changed the element that up to that point only the plants could change, which is verticality. There were all kinds of secrets you could get by jumping off of Yoshi's back That's as true. you jump from Yoshi. Yeah, yeah. Plus, Yoshi represents something that I think Sonic does equally well, but which is always satisfying, which is Yoshi is kind of coins or the rings system 
before it rains. Yeah, a, like a single hit that because you, keep you your would powers. get you would get right. the same f- feeling of desperation as Sonic gets when you're grappling for your last coin with like no Yoshi don't fall off the cliff let me climb back yeah. aboard your elegant back yeah. Yoshi. <laughs> He was much more of a mount in that game than he ever was after that. And then he wasn't cute in the same way. And eating people. So yeah, he's one power up, but he's three power ups. Right. And because the tongue is also, of course, fundamentally changes the way you can deal with enemies. So Yoshi is actually three power ups, and all three of them make you do something functionally you didn't do before. Yeah. Which is the quintess. That's the quintessence of what a good power up yeah. is. It was really fun, and it. He's three and one. You didn't, but you also, it, or you organically experienced all his power ups. Yes. Uh, they weren't like there was nothing RPG about it, or like you had to figure it out. It was like, oh, this is the level that has all blue shelled troops. So like your your Yoshi's gonna fly. Oh, cool. And you need him to yeah. fly because that's how the level's designed. Or you're like, you there's know, like, something high up there. Oh, like you kind of intuitively figure out, yeah. well, I've been jumping off Yoshi's back. I right. bet I could get up there. There's yeah. not a lot of puzzles in Mario World that are brain twisters. But they're puzzles in the Breath of the Wild way where it's simply like realizing yeah. that you now effectively have a double jump because you're right. on Yoshi. That's right. just a a physics concept yep. puzzle. Yeah. Yep. And now this is now in reach. Right. And Very, that's the thing they do yeah. a lot. I mean, Metroid has a lot of that stuff, you know, like yes. effectively. Metroid is, I think the way it's differentiated is it's so focused on gating. Yeah. Um, which Super Mario World obviously is not. Super Mario World has some gating, though. Like, well, there are definitely the routes. The map itself is a gate in some ways. Well, and there are routes that you have to either get a power up or right. learn how it, like, like figure out the trick to it. Or the, you know. Or the way is roundabout. Right. Yeah. You know, that happens sometimes. Um, yeah, I remember it was, but I liked the nature of the puzzles. I liked that I didn't read the instruction manual, if there even was one, I don't recall, and that I eventually figured out what the red dots meant, mm-hmm. that there's two exits out mm-hmm. of the level. Yep. I liked figuring that out myself. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk about a couple other cool things about this game that were unique to it. I'm pretty sure that that uh, the ghost character. Yeah, bo- ghost houses have to be discussed. But they were, I'm pretty sure they were in Mario 3. Like, I think that the ghosts were in Mario With before. the boo functionality where they chase yeah. you and your back is turned. But they. But I feel like the way we think of that character is exclusively based on how it was done in Mario World. Well, what I wanted to bring up is I think it represented at that time a really pioneering of, a real pioneering rather of, uh, the fact that a 2D platformer game can have a variety of level types. Um, flash forward yes. to Rayman Legends, and of course, your whole goal becomes unlocking those badass rhythm music-based levels. Uh, I think you flash back again. I'm taking you on a trip through time, baby. I love that you're doing that. Um, <laughs> flash back again, and we see JFK getting assassinated. Oh, that was too far. Very sad. Flash forward to the present. Well, 1990, I suppose. And my point was... <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm waiting for you to ride that. The it. ghost houses actually are a puzzle level because not only did I have to figure out how to get out of the ghost house using the. It's always a little bit tricky. Using yeah. the. Oh, it's very. It, it's almost Inception esque. Sometimes in the room, the room looks identical, but there's a minor detail that lets me know it's a parallel version of that room with one block different, or a POW thing will do something that it did differently in the other room. Right. And you slow. There, it's twofold. First, I can't think, other than simple bonus rounds where you like jump and get coins or power-ups, of any previous 2D platformer that said, you know what would keep it fun? A few different kinds of experiences. I'm sure that there were, but not as seamlessly integrated as this. Because you don't even bat an eye or think about it. Like, I mean, Battletoads, for instance, has the jet ski yes, levels versus the punch very levels. Good and pull. But the... But the they give you basically two different types of games and Mario is always the same game in different styles. You're doing the same things. And I think it was the ghost house thing was amazing for me because as a kid, I remember the first layer of the puzzle is realizing even that it is a puzzle. Like I would play it and just go through. I mean, I was a dumb kid. I'd go to the (laughs) right, to the right, to the right until time ran out and be like, what is something wrong with this level? Am I glitching or something? Yeah, right. like I don't understand. What? You had to realize it was a puzzle, and then figure the puzzle out, and you feel real accomplished when yeah. you do. The fortresses also 
were usually puzzles. And they feel tangibly different than yeah. the uh, your meat and potatoes levels, I'll call them. I, I thought the fortresses were the single best improvement in this game as a level design thing. So, like, At, compared to yeah. fortresses in the previous Mario franchise. Is Mario World the first to introduce dual side fences where you can flip to the back yes. side? Like, the Z axis. It also shows that they're. That would be why. No, it wouldn't. Z is the one. No, that, Z is the one that goes out into depth. Yeah, and you're going further away from camera. All right. In theory. But I mean, in the sense of a 2D platformer, what it gives you right. is the ability to travel on right, the Y it does. axis. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to talk about axes anymore. Mm, can't wait to talk about it. <laughs> he constantly brings up axes and points. And <laughs> Let me see Z axis, buddy. <laughs> don't get this guy going on uh, elongated orbits. It never stops. <laughs> Vectors and shit. Um, we have an Incineroar, and he fights for us. <laughs> He went where once he opposed us. <laughs> now he's our dearest ally and comrade. <laughs> it's only funny to us because we're not Pokemon people, so neither of us I know who Incineroar is. I have no is. idea what he does. Yeah. I've looked at him and I don't know him. It's the equivalent of, because there's another guy on there, and this it's like if someone leaned over and they're like, psst, don't worry. Hal Emmerich's on our team now. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, okay. <laughs> cool. Good. <laughs> If you want to see a picture, it looks like a dude in a suit. I don't know what that's from, but. <laughs> True. Um, but I think it also signals a change in their thinking where they're real. Well, I mean, are you flying with the tail also does this, but there's yeah. such a robust interest in Super Mario World of ways to use the Y axis. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot more than in previous games. A lot more intentional focus on it. Yeah. And there's just better platforming throughout. Yeah. Like, although uh, three had all the levels where you could go above the top of the level, right? That's a little Y axis fun. I'm trying to think which levels those are that you're talking about. In uh it might even be Mario one or two. Uh-huh. Uh, there are a number of levels where if you break the bricks that border the top of the screen, you can jump out of the screen. Oh yeah. And go Mario one has that. right. That's one. That's, That's where one. all the warps are. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that happens in Mario three. Three too. is the flute. Yes, you got the, really the magic. In, you got really into fluting, yeah. flautisting. See, now you can't. The warping is another thing they got rid of in Mario World. Right, you don't really warp. You just find shortcuts because it became less about, like we said, cheats that a hardcore gamer would eventually find. Right, and more about no, everyone come to Disneyland. Everyone have a good right. time. Yeah. Wander <laughs> around the Star World and like, gain these Yoshi's and stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That is absolutely what happened. Um, okay, so you want to hear a weird theory that I have about? What, war- what Super Mario World means to the narrative of Mario. Yeah, of course. I think that Super <laughs> Mario World is the only time we visit Bowser's home world. I and think- you think Dino Land is Bowser's home world? Yes, Is I it do. explicitly? I thought it was Yoshi's home world. I think it is Yoshi's home world, but I don't. But I think they were both well, cause in certainly, this, from the same home world. Uh, all his, all his uh, babies be making castles out here. Here are my reasonings for it. Yes, uh-huh. that's, that's the right. biggest one okay. is that he has all those children... Don't know and where they've or gotten how. busy like claiming yes. land on this world. Correct. They yeah. all they're all lieutenants of various areas in the land. And are there other sorry. Bowser is a dinosaur. Yes. Bowser's head is woven into a sea cave that rises from the ocean. Right? Like that's a pretty I'll grant you that. <laughs> that's a pretty big Like why does he thing have that to there? <laughs> sure. Like I know he's built castles and stuff in places, but That's my question is in the whole Mario canon though. Aren't there Bowser castles like everywhere, wherever they want to be I all think the time? Bowser building castles is not what makes it a home world. Kay. I think the fact that the landscape itself is part Bowser and that his children are the lieutenants of this place. Also, and that he's a dinosaur. Also, can we talk about the fact that in this game, the hills have eyes? They like, really the do. The hills yeah, literally why do have, they eyes? have eyes. I don't know. It's why. so fucking creepy. No, what does that mean? What, mm. is that, what does that mean about Dino Land? I think that's the only ridiculous thing in this game. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Is I, don't, that, I don't know. Well, I, don't know. I do love that someone at the end of the thing was like, you know what? Slap some googly eyes on those guys, too. Right. Really? Really? Everything's alive? Fuck it. Yeah, everything's alive. I don't care. Right. I'm, I'm Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that's like a weird relic from their first uh, like manual, right. you know. So this is also the last place we really have the Koopa Troopas as your regular enemy. Like the Koopa Troopas, they're in sixty four, but no, they're you race one who's a big one, and you see one or two. 
but right. they rarely are your enemy and anymore. now they've actually evolved to supporting cast yes so in the new mario games their npcs you talk yes. to you don't heartlessly crush their shells. no and i would argue this was the game where they decided that is true because all the times that you ejected them from their home <laughs> because you know when you jump on a yeah, Koopa Troopa, a, you spit out a white evicting beard evicting a turtle yeah <laughs> Exactly. You're evicting turtles. <laughs> I feel like after the events of this game, the Koopa Troops are like, why are we fighting for Bowser? We're all losing our homes. You know what I mean? And this that's why is, they yeah. wear masks. When you when you pass all the way through the game and clear all the phases, they wear, uh-huh. Mar- they wear Mario masks. Yeah. Because they're on your team now. They've turned. You have yes. earned their respect. Yes. So the Yoshis were the people on that planet who were always sympathetic to the Mario faction. Or just n- neutral. You know? Yeah. Well, they leave a note for you. So I they think do. he says, and he says, I left, I think to oppose Bowser in some way. Right. I don't remember or did he, why. I think he's just like, I'm out looking for some pies. Come find me. But <laughs> it's a flimsy excuse to say yeah. I've been trapped in various eggs all over the world. Well, Bowser kidnaps the eggs in like, yeah. in theory, you're, you're saving princess and eggs. Right. So I guess what I'm saying is. I like the idea. And why wasn't this the live action Mario movie? It totally works. <laughs> I don't know. Princess tasks Mario with rescuing these dino eggs. Mario is kind of Nedry ish from Jurassic Park. 100%. So Mario, played by Wayne Knight, because Bob Hoskins ain't no more. I'm totally unappreciated in my time. Yeah. <laughs> Wayne Knight is approached by the princess, told to go to Bowser's homeland, infiltrate, and rescue these precious eggs, these yeah. dino eggs, because yeah. she's going to sell them to InGen. Put them in his little shaving kit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and while he's there, Three Kings style, he gets involved in local situations, and he's like, no, we have to free these people right. from oppression. And he ends up winning over the uh, basically the peasant, faction of this society which are the koopa troopas they are the weakest the only fact that is even remotely in contradiction to what you're saying yeah. is the fact that you do rescue princess at the end she is in bowser's weird clown ship that he rides that's his tr- clown helicopter oh, okay how about this yeah you are actually nedry you were there only for selfish reasons right you were promised not to get involved your heart's been burned too many times right but the princess is there out of the goodness of her heart to use her powers to rescue these eggs. Yeah. And you're like convinced to join her side. Yeah. So uh, she was all. I don't know. I don't know. That's tough. That one's tough. The other thing that I would need reconciled is. <laughs> because. Do you talk. Okay. In Odyssey. Goombas are NPCs. But you. They don't speak. And you stack them. And you do smash them. My you, one, you kill the goombas. What I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you also stack them and get them to fall in love <laughs> to get true. moons. Yeah. I'm wondering if goombas are just <laughs> like uh, the generic scum of the universe that everyone in Mario verse. Like, it doesn't matter that he freed this planet. Yes, yeah, step on Goombas. Fuck Goombas. No one cares. Right. Nobody think, cares about the Goombas. I still right. think it's weird that this game centered around a guy named Mario. And they have a bad the, guy named the Goomba. The I, get you, I get it. No, the thing you'll kill the most of that's clearly the weakest enemy at the bottom of society is a filthy Goomba. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand it. He's a, Why do they have weird bottom teeth like pit He's bulls? a self-hating plumber on mushrooms. That's It's the right, taxi right, right, driver right. of our generation. And, and that uh, that's the theory that I think is the most logical if you want all of it to work. I'm trying to accept this thing on its own terms a little bit. And yeah. on its own terms, I do believe this is Bowser's home world, Super Mario World. Yes. I do believe that's where we but are. But I think a really dark movie where a guy named Mario lives in a bad part of the Bowery convinces himself that he's destined to save some woman he sees across the alley through their window who's always being uh, mistreated by her big Bowser-like boyfriend yep. who takes mushrooms and like kills the guy Definitely. with the katana and it ends with the cops hauling him away Definitely. and the woman going like, he's fucking nuts, I yeah. don't know, he's crazy. Yeah. That's Definitely. a good movie right there. It's Taxi Driver. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like exactly Taxi Driver. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's a great movie. It's a me, a Taxi Driver. <laughs> You're looking at me, are you, Mario. Are you talking to a me? <laughs> you must be talking to me. I don't see anybody else around. <laughs> they did it on Pluto with Waluigi in a this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm losing my Italian accent. <laughs> that, thank you. You saved yeah. it. That's the specifically the triple jump sound, isn't it? Yes. They <laughs> see Mario uh-huh. didn't. Mario never really spoke. I don't think until Mario 64. Right. That's where we found out 
That he has like a sweet, that he cute little voice. Like yeah. Mickey Mouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's he right. does. Yeah, that that is accurate. It's also where yeah he he became less portly and more sort of cute miniaturized. Yeah, you know. I think because Mario World, he's still kind of. I do of a, think his design is influenced quite literally by the Disney style of, of art. Of course, yeah, and that's fine. Looking at the current Smash Brothers, they give him like a white glow. And you notice that? Yeah. Like he has like a weird well, white edging to he's everything the, that he's makes him like the Jesus glow. of the Nintendo it's universe. It's really like, come on, guys. It's like all the other characters have to be like, shh, Mario's coming. Yeah, it's Mario's really coming. dumb. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not a fan. I don't care for that. Oh, by the way, I refuse to look it up. If anyone knows why in spirits mode of Smash Brothers Ultimate, <laughs> you have a slight rainbow glow around your body, even when your final smash yeah, is what's not up with charged, that? let us know in the I'm not going to look it up. I'm going to hope that one day I figure it out. <laughs> uh, I agree with that. Uh, okay, so have you ever played a more fun platforming game than this? 2D? Are like, you, honestly, okay, okay. in your opinion. Uh, the only things that come to mind are 3D. I would argue that Rayman Legends, the second one... That's a one, really good game. ...approaches how fun it is. It's but really it still good. doesn't reach how fun it is. It's like 95% is fun. Yeah. And, of course... It owes everything it is to Mario and came 20 years later. So it's it's a little bit more whimsical. Like the Rayman games are more what playful. I, what I truly ways. appreciate about Rayman is these people love animation in a deep way, in the yeah. way that I love animation. Yeah. It's like the prettiest animated game. Talk about parallax. There's like 30 <laughs> layers of animation going Rayman on. Rayman also incorporates something that Sonic did that Mario has never really done. Where you constantly want forward momentum. Yes. Yes. Yes, Rayman does that. Mario is the only game that was not determined to make you constantly have to move forward like that. Unless like, you had the cape. It wanted you to jump from place to place and make decisions. The cape was the time when you were like, fuck, I have to run. This yeah, guy yeah, handles, yeah, yeah. this guy doesn't run great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you kind of really realize he's a middle-aged plumber when you're trying to run with you, him. <laughs> but you could get really good enough at he Mario that like you could- a motherfucker. Though. Yeah, that you could like really be in the air the whole time. Like, if you got really good at oh, Mario, yeah. you could do that. Even in Mario 3, there's yeah. that famous 11-minute speed run right. where the dude never touches the ground. It's Which amazing. is like, when you go back and play those levels- it's like, So awesome. Oh my God, how did he do that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Speaking of how uh, jumpy he is, I do think- it certainly wasn't the first, and it obviously just cemented the tradition, but it's just interesting to me to observe in the present how we're finally easing off the idea that if you're a video game character, for no reason, you jump as high as your body, like you jump six right. feet into the air. You have Do you to know what I mean? jump an amount that is fun to look at. That used to be sacrosanct. Right. Like, it would be super weird if the character didn't jump as high as their head. It would be weird, yeah. And now I think we're finally easing off that pedal, and uh, it's something that Donkey Kong Country doesn't get enough credit for. Because when you play Donkey Kong Country, I think one of the things you'll notice if you play a lot of 2D platformers is at first it feels slow and clunky, much like a giant ape, right. because... You're like, you don't jump as quite as high or as far as I feel like I'm used to He's in these kinda games. It's kind of horizontal. That game's kind of horizontal. Then you slowly realize, but that's okay, the levels are built for that right. distance of jump. Right. And this game is more about, what if we made a 2D platformer that drove ahead? Because Mario is about going upwards. Up and forward. I mean, like... Up and forward, yeah. but like his jump... I mean, fucking jump man is how this all started. Right, right. His jump is his notable attribute. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I think Donkey Kong's notable attribute is moving forward. <laughs> I'll save that for a more in depth Donkey we Kong country. We should talk episode. about Donkey Kong at some point. I guess. Yeah. I feel like it would be a meaty 30 minute episode, but I don't know how you'd get an hour out of it. I mean, you and I can get an hour out of it. Believe all you right. me. We'll figure that out. Yeah. I mean, if. I kind of don't even want to approach it. We re I we think what we think about Donkey Kong, right? Like I like Donkey Kong. No, but I mean his creation. Oh, that he's racist. Own, he's not okay, right? Like it's not a. So you and I were having a cool guy. You were <laughs> you and I were having this argument off camera at some point, and my contention was because he's derivative of King Kong, and King Kong is a racist stereotype, that he's kind of a racist stereotype. But the sure. case beyond that gets tough to make, I think. I mean, he plays a, he's like a jazz musician, so I guess there's that. But yeah, I, I, beyond that, like what else I'll is there? There's if you look online, there's a lot of evidence. Oh, is there more? But I'll bring okay. it up. Okay. But yeah. it is like conspiracy theory evidence. You know what I sure, mean? Sure, sure. It's evidence where you're like, 
Sure. Or that was a coincidence. You know, it could go either way. Okay. But but no, it's not dismissible. I don't think it's easily dismissible. That's a and I do think Japanese culture has a blind spot for racism against African Americans. That seems in their like art. In it has. Oh, really? I've okay. witnessed. Well, so do we. We, I mean, America releases shit that we have to go. Oh, that's hella racist. I didn't know. I mean, I'm not going to be the one to throw the first stone on that. But, but nonetheless, I agree that if it's not dismissible, that's a real problem. Like that's a bummer. So maybe we won't talk. It's about such a coming. bummer. It, I feel like it's ruined this episode of the podcast. No. Do you have any other Super Mario World observations <laughs> to bring us out of the funk before we wrap up? Uh. I like that the the piranha plants were less frustrating in this game. Like they just toned yeah. things down to so that they're fun. And yet the game still feels like it has ups peaks and valleys of challenge and that it's long. It right. doesn't feel They also have characters that Nintendo has started to care about more than you'd think they would. Like for yeah. instance that football character. Uh I I forgot to bring him up. He's my least favorite addition I to never the Mario verse ever. I hate facing him. He I don't sucks. like him either. But then they brought him back for Odyssey, and that was weird. It's yeah. like, oh, you brought this guy back. Like, well, you now, really care about this. I think Smash Brothers Ultimate makes it clear that at this point, everything Nintendo canon. is obsessed with their own right. history and legacy. Right. Like, Smash Brothers Ultimate is like, you think you're Nintendo fans? We're Nintendo fans. We know everything. Yeah. We've We're, kept every fucking thing. Remember yeah. Sheriff and Sheriff 2? That's right, you <laughs> don't. And we're going to give him a good power so you have to look up what he's from, <laughs> motherfuckers. We're Nintendo. Remember Dark Mr. Game & Watch? Because <laughs> you no. can play him. <laughs> have we... F- is there a no, dark? I'm just okay. saying, like, like that's such a Smash face. Brothers thing. Remember classic Nintendo staple <laughs> Bayonetta? <laughs> <laughs> She's they back, Bayonetta. and she brought Incineroar with her. <laughs> what? And they both fight Wait, for what? you he now. He defected. <laughs> Incineroar's on your side. Boy, Incineroar has gotten more mic time out of my mouth than I ever thought he would get. Uh, speaking of... Mike mouth time you're out of it this is the end of the episode wow uh so you want want to keep this game right we moved past our last checkpoint (laughs) uh which is which is keep or delete no i know i'm trying to think of a good juicy one right right through that sunken ship Remember that sunken ghost ship? Oh, yeah. Very special level. Yeah. Yeah, it, It also it had the audacity to have standout levels that you're like yeah, that level is a unique experience unto itself. And yet, you can't really differentiate the lands that much in Super Mario World. Yeah, the lands true. all kind of blend together. Oh my god, the giant N64 eel is coming. We better hurry up. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. Yeah, I'm going to keep it. Uh, I, don't, I can't think of a way to improve this game. Can you think of a way you would want it to be improved? Yeah. Uh, a glaring one that everyone who's heard the podcast can guess. Is this a story problem? If I were allowed to go back in time and like buckle down with my fave writing team, and I think we could come up with a cohesive story of interesting plot elements that had all the same functionality, but was so you just add some story cohesive and not stupid and random. Okay. I would like it if Mario was not an assortment of random items. Yeah, but that's really my only gripe that I'll ever have with Mario games. I mean, and, except and, for sunshine. And, it's, and I'm like beating a dead pixelated horse because everyone has known that. You yeah. know, everyone's done the sketch about, isn't it crazy how Mario's just crazy? Right. Yeah, we know. Right. <laughs> when Every time I beat this game and like play the music and just watch all the shit in it, though, for some reason that gets emotional. And like, emotional. It does. It you gets like nostalgic. No. Uh, no, no. Keep going. No, it does. Keep it going. gets like a weird nostalgia. And they, I feed on your emotion. <laughs> I'm going to drink you. <laughs> drink your nostalgia. No, it's like a little bit nostalgic to watch all the things you just played against. And they are nonsensical. Yeah. And they parade them in front of you that way. But you're saying it's interesting just in the sense of, it's like, uh, you know the opening credits for My Neighbor Totoro? No. Okay. Well, they are just a parade. Like, literally, a, the border, as yeah. the credits play, yeah, yeah. is a cute little parade in, uh, do you know what Chibi is? For yes. Anime? Yeah. Yes. Of, like, Chibi versions of all, little collectible, cute, Funko Pop versions of all the characters you're about to see. Oh. So, if, like me, Totoro's a favorite, you know, like Disney's Robin Hood or whatever, anytime after the first time you watch it, you're so emotional 
in the opening credits because you're like, look at cute little May, look at cute little Chibi Totoro. <laughs> like, what an interesting choice. They present little collectibles of what yeah. you're about to see, like an, a visual overture almost. Yeah. It's really cool. It's true. It, you do see the, the beginnings of the let's make toys out of this overtly. And I think in the this end game. of that is Smash Brothers Ultimate, where right. it's, it feels like... I purchased a hutch of miniatures. <laughs> like right. it's a collection of right. miniature Nintendo figurines. And like a and like a really cool platform to play with them on. Like yeah. you know, like that's it. Like a Mighty Max playset with yeah. sh- action missiles and shit. Mighty yeah. Max. Thank you. Like the Technodrome. I miss Remember? Mighty Max and Polly Pocket. I watched both. Yeah, I seen <laughs> Polly Pocket. That's I didn't have a lot of school chums who who straddled the line. Interesting. Polly Pocket, Polly Mighty Pocket. Max divide. Wow. I'm just super woke like that, bro. <laughs> Stay. You've been woke. You're staying woke. Let me ask you this: In yeah. Super Mario World, yeah, is there only one iteration of the shirtless turtle who's shirtless when you first see him, and then crawls into a shell that becomes a rainbow in, in like invincible shell? Does that ever happen again? Because you played it more. Re- I don't recently. remember it happening in later games at all. No, no. Even within Super Mario World, it happens. It can happen at any time. There are other anytime invincible get, turtles. Anytime a shirtless turtle gets back into its shell, it can become invincible. Oh, I always thought that was some random moment, no. like the fucking koalas no, in they Super can't Metroid. Get back in. And I was like, "What is that rainbow invincible turtle? Is that a key to a cheat or no, something?" No, you kick that guy out. You got to keep him out. See, that just means every time I played, I've never let a turtle back in their no. home. <laughs> yeah, you've just taken their home. <laughs> I'm from an them. effective turtle evictor. Yeah. Well, if you get a loose shell. You don't you immediately feel a pull towards it? Oh, yeah. Because that's one of your more powerful weapons in the that game. Thing. You're booting that yeah. shit. Yeah. It, it is really ooh, satisfying ooh. to kick things in this game. When you realize you can throw shells up. Yeah. And that's your a big brain one. immediately solves eight puzzles yep. you saw previously. You're like, oh, now I can do that and that and I that. I think <laughs> you could do that in Mario 3. Cool. I think you could do it in Mario uh, 3. Yeah, it's cool either so. way. Yeah. But yeah. Thanks for holding down the knowledge part, because I've played it three or four times, but not for years. It's hard to distinguish between, because those are the two best of that genre, the 2D Mario genre. I, I, do, I see Personally, the promise I in one. I still replay yeah, one great. and feel like it's like watching Eraserhead, where you're like, you can see the promise one in this is filmmaker. Definitely the most creative of all the Marios, because it's everything. Like the, gene, it, the the genes of the entire franchise. They right? invented the genre of two D platforming right. when all they had before was the arcade game Donkey Kong. <laughs> like they thought, what if we stacked these left to right? Bear with me, man, infinitely, and you just ran to the right. <laughs> you know, like it's I a like whole how mad they are. It's a whole different yeah. game. It's but amazing. also if you go through and play all those levels in Mario One, it's like yeah. they had a lot of good ideas. Da, like da, da, so da, da, many. Da, da, da. Yeah, not the, even the types, but just like the mechanics of various. Yeah. versions of this it, it, like it's really right. impressive anyway a tale for another day another day we out incineroar no what? <laughs> work complete This has been a Small Beans endeavor. We're a bunch of pals who make podcasts, sketches, music, web series, and movies. The Beans always have new ideas percolating, so make sure to check us out at patreon.com slash smallbeans. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash smallbeans, where you can browse all of our current and past content, see what we've got planned in the future, and learn how your support can help the Small Beans grow into huge, giant monster beans. If you enjoyed this content module, please like, rate, subscribe, or tell a friend about us. We love you!